Virginia 10-0 coming into this one. Stutch still, and it's batted up in the air. Ted Page with the big play. If Steve Sabo, the defensive coordinator for Boston College credit, every third down play in this drive, he's come with the blitz. That time, he faked the blitz. The two linebackers, they use the sugar technique, we call it. They step up, they step up, they step up, and then they bail back out into the zone. Caught Stutzville a little bit off balance, and he's got fourth down at 10 yards. And we'll talk it over on the sideline. Timeout, West Virginia with seven minutes and 44 seconds left in front of a hostile packed house at Alumni Stadium trailing 14 to three. And now they are down to one timeout remaining two, but they've got a fourth and 10 to try to pick up when we come back. They picked up a fourth and six earlier in this drive. Boy, they're gonna have to earn this one. Kearney and Baker out to the top of your screen as the wideouts for Darren Stutzville. In trouble, throws to the end zone. And a penalty marker in the end zone will have pass interference. And it will be another first down by penalty for West Virginia. Joe Kamara is the guy that time. If he would have just turned around and looked for the ball, he would have been able to stay away from that penalty, but he just raised his arms. West Virginia that time, Brad, only sent out two receivers. Had Boston College played zone, they would have been dead. They Pass interference, it. defense, a 15-yard penalty on the spot of the snap. Automatic first down. That moves it all the way down inside the 10-yard line as we get another look. The ball was thrown late, and the defender had the re receiver had to th turn around, but Clifford and Camaro were the two guys that were there. You see it. If he could have just turned his head around, he would have been all right. All, all right. But West Virginia, again, now has the ball at the six-yard line. First and goal at the six. West Virginia was down close once before and had to settle for a 20-yard field goal. Ed Hill and Mike Baker, the wideouts here, but you got to expect maybe Robert Walker. Nope, they'll give it to Warner instead, and he goes in untouched. Boston College may have been thinking about Walker, and Rodney Woodard scoots in from the six. And now... Do you go for two, Gary, or kick an extra point here? It's 14 to nine. We're gonna see right now if Don Nealon's playing for the national championship or the Big East championship, because he needs a win to be in the national championship picture. And I think if you look at Boston College, it might kick a field goal, that would get them 17. If you miss, you only have nine. That means an eight point spread to tie it. I'd kick the extra point right here in this situation. Make it a four point game and say, listen, I'm gonna get the ball back and win it. Virginia has decided like, uh, against that, though. And we'll go for two here. Two-point conversion attempt. Trying to cut the gap to a field goal. Stub still. Intercepted. Picked off by Michael Reed. Michael Reed with the play of the game. The point I'm trying to make again is Boston College now comes down and kicks a field goal. It's 17 to nine. You're eight points down, and you can't win the game even with a two-point conversion. That time, West Virginia tried to come out and run a pick play. Boston College sat in the zone, and they ended up with the interception. But a penalty uh, appears on the return. Extra point is no good. Extra point, obviously no good. Picked off by Reed, and an injured player down is Rodney Woodard, who had just scored the touchdown on the previous play. The problem right here is West Virginia is going to get called for the penalty. It's going to back them up on the kickoff. First the touchdown, just a little bit of a handoff inside. Everybody's expecting the out option outside, and they just crease it inside. Now the two-point play, trying to get the ball to Kearney, but Michael Reed steps in front of it. Stops the two-point conversion on the good zone coverage from the inside. And that's a big play because, again, it's a five-point game. A field goal by Boston College would really put the game away for West Virginia and put their title hopes away. 
Woodard injured, and we've got a timeout with 7.36 remaining in the ball game. West Virginia has cut into the lead, but they still trail by five. The penalty on the interception of the two-point conversion against Boston College has given West Virginia the opportunity to kick from midfield, and Gary Boston College is thinking onside kick. They've got all their tight ends and wide receivers, nine of them, within 10 yards of the upcoming kick. Yeah, that, that's key. On the return, there was a blocking below the waist, and that's going to give a 15-yard penalty, and they have the possibility now of trying an onside kick and not being penalized too badly if they don't pick it up. Sauerbrunn will kick. Away. And he blasts this one out of the end zone. So it'll be the 20-yard line for Boston College with a five-point lead and 7.36 to go. And right now we go to Mike Tirico. Well, Brad, earlier Nebraska was able to uh, make its claim for number one, finishing the perfect season in the regular season, winning by 14. And after the game, their quarterback, Tommy Frazier, reiterated the claim that, hey, we should be at the top of the polls. Well, all I can say to them, we leveling it over right now, and if that's not good enough for them, it's good enough for us and good enough for the um, voters out there. And what everyone else thinks, I don't really care right now. College try to spoil West Virginia's dreams of a perfect regular season. They lead the Mountaineers 14-9, and now they're 7-25 away from being able to pull that trick off and win their ninth straight ball game. Really was a fantastic drive for West Virginia. Two fourth down plays got them the touchdown in the position for the touchdown. And now the pressure is back on Glenn Foley to produce another drive and take the momentum back in this football game. Worst starting position of the second half for BC. But Foley stands tall as all day and now he'll take off. Does a slide and a late hit. Steve Perkins put a helmet in to Foley and shouldn't have, but it's going to cost him extra yards. Defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. What's well, amazing, Glenn Foley knew exactly how far he had to go. He had to get the ball to the 30-yard line because of the touchback right here. West Virginia is only rushing three players. You see Foley coming out, limping just a bit. He knows he has to get to that line. He goes down across the line, and boom, Perkins picks up 15 more yards. So all the way to the 45 in one play. And now West Virginia's maybe wishing they had tried an outside kick. It wouldn't have been much worse than this. All the Eagles need is a sustained march because West Virginia has but one timeout left, remember. They're going to have to do it, I think, throwing the football because West Virginia has seven and eight men close to the line of scrimmage. Foley sends Mitchell in motion. Gets it off to Campbell. Richardson hanging on, or Campbell would have went off for a big gainer because that was a lot of open space on that side of the field. Can't talk enough about the job the offensive line has done for Boston College really since the Northwestern loss. They've really found themselves. It's no accident when a quarterback has great stats, he's the beneficiary of that offensive line doing a job. Nalen, Landry, and Kendall. Seems like they've had great success running the ball to the left side of the formations today. Boston College started the season 0-2, losing 23-7 to Miami, and then the game Gary alluded to, a one-point setback to Northwestern. Campbell. About a yard short of the first down. Third and one coming up. Derek Wiley made the stop. Campbell really is a workhorse for this football team. Now we talked about the great running game, uh, the passing game for Boston College, but let's talk again. Boston College runs the ball 42 times a game, throws the ball 32 times a game. I mean, that's the average for the year, and that guy gets the bulk of the carries. As we mentioned earlier, became the ninth thousand-yard rusher in Boston College history. He's done it in style, 100-yard day. Third and one. He'll probably get it one more time here. Everybody stacked up close for the Mountaineers defensively. Campbell, first down. It's the same play that Darnell Campbell scored on. Watch the tight end, Gordon Laro. He's the guy that's the lead back in this type of formation. He comes in, and he's up back. You see Mitchell coming across. Number 98 is the guy blocking the middle linebacker. That's a simple pickup for a first down. Good execution by the tight ends for Boston College. Campbell will get a breather after his 26th carry. David Green comes in at the tailback spot. First and 10 BC. 
Green. He finds an opening. A little change of pace going from 220 pounds of Campbell to 192 of Green. And Green picks up about six yards. Really was a nice job by David Green that time. Last year he carried the ball 71 times, averaging 3.4, so he's got a plenty of experience for this type of offense from the tailback position. Just doesn't have the opportunity to carry it a lot, this offense, because of Campbell. West Virginia coming in was the team that rushed for seventh best in the country today. It's belonged to Boston College, that rushing total, 121 on the ground. Most of it, Darnell Campbell. But Green with a nice pick up there, second and three. Now they come with Anthony Comer. He's close to a first down. And that clock just keeps ticking. 349 remaining. It keeps ticking, and it also has them pretty close to field goal range in this game now. Three and a half minutes, as you say, before the next one will even be snapped. Boston College took over with 736 remaining on the clock. And as Gary mentioned, if you go for two, as West Virginia did, and don't get it, which they didn't, if Boston College goes down and gets three, it'll be a long way back for West Virginia and a very short time to do it. See, my argument was for going for two didn't help West Virginia at all. They needed to win this football game. They were going to go for the win no matter what. They needed two touchdowns, whether that one point, they needed the one point more than the two points, really. Jake Kelchner warming up, hoping for another chance. Studstill has played the majority of this half. Kelchner and Studstill shared time in the first half. First and ten, Boston Conley. From the 32 of West Virginia, and it's number 32 again, and Campbell. Five more. And his lineman out there not only blocking for him, but protecting him as well. Ariskovich was out there mixing it up a little bit with one of the Mountaineers. feeling for an offense than to put away a game when you keep your defense on the bench. I know in the huddle right now, Glenn Foley's saying, no penalties. Guys, block them. If you miss them, we'll just take whatever happens. But let's, no big penalties right now. We got this game in our hands. Let's finish the game on the field. Second down and five from the 27 of West Virginia. And time running out on West Virginia's hopes for an unbeaten season. Virginia's covered it. The break they needed just came with 2.24 left in the football game. And coming out of the pile is Mike Logan. Exactly what Boston College had tried to avoid, just keep it on the ground and use clock. But Green fumbling on this play. Green fumbled, but from the secondary, I think it was Perkins, number 97, that got his hand on the ball just after it was handed off. And I'll tell you, hold on to your seat. This one's going to get wild now. 14 to 9, 223 left. West Virginia has one timeout left. And it'll be Stud still at quarterback. Perkins, the guy that knocked that ball away from Green, remember, had the personal foul on Foley that helped BC get their drive going. So he got one back for him. Stud still. Baker took a big hit. Held onto the ball. It's his first catch. Eric Shorter let him have it right in the ribs, and only a pickup of about three. Boston College laying back, playing zone defense, should try to make things happen in front of them. Remember, the college rules, every first down, the clock stops. We did a game earlier in the year, Illinois, Minnesota. Illinois ran 11 plays in 57 seconds with no timeouts. Aaron Stubb still trying to do what Johnny Johnson did in that one for the Illini. Boston College, four critical turnovers have given West Virginia the opportunity they've been looking for. Woodard. Woodard into the secondary. And the man who got the only touchdown of the day for the Mountaineers has them back in Boston College territory. 16 yards, first down. And it has gotten definitely quiet at Alumni Stadium. 